Hello and welcome. It's yours truly, Brian Earl, here coming to you from Christmas Past Headquarters in sunny San Mateo, California. I hope wherever you are, it's somewhere nice and that you're happy, healthy, and full of the Christmas spirit, just like I am and my guest is as well. So let's give a nice warm welcome to Jesse in Pennsylvania. Hi, Jesse. Thanks for being here. Hi, thanks for having me. Now, Jesse, I happen to know that you got to experience a lot of your growing up during the 90s, which was a super fun decade to experience Christmas, wasn't it? Heck yeah. <laughs> Are there any things about the 90s that you remember, especially for Christmas? Uh, I'm the talk boy. I just remember there was a talk boy one year and the next year there was a talk girl and I had both and I loved them. <laughs> I'm actually unfamiliar with the talk boy and the talk girl. When I find out what they are, I'll put links in the show notes below for anyone else who's interested in finding out about those. I came a little bit before you. My Most of my growing up was in the 70s and 80s, and I was, I think, sort of phasing out in my late teens during the 90s. So we're going to see what you know about this particular decade. Let me explain the game before we get started. As always, we go in four rounds with five questions each. All of the questions follow a similar format or theme for each round. A correct answer is worth one point. No points are taken off for incorrect answers. And as always, if I feel like giving you partial credit or even bonus points, I can do that as my discretion. Are you ready for round one? Let's do it. All right. First round, I am calling May May and May La. Do you know what those refer to, Jesse? I don't. <laughs> well, according to the tag that comes on these, those are two things required by a Furby. Furbies, of course, were some of the most popular toys during the 1990s. Let's see how you do answering five multiple choice questions about the Furby. Question number one. Oh the Furby wasn't the first smash hit for its inventor, David Hampton. He's also the creator of what sensation from the 80s? Was it A, the video game Cubert, B, the pogo ball, or C, parachute pants? Go with Qbert. Correct. He actually was the inventor of Qbert. One point for you on the board. Off to a great start. Question number two. Due to its popularity, Furby scored some endorsement deals. For example, its image was emblazoned on what? Was it A, a limited edition plate from the Franklin Mint? B, Nike's revolution line of sneakers for kids? Or C, packages of Nutter Butter cookies? Uh, sneakers? Uh, that would have been awesome, actually, but it was packages <laughs> of Nutter Butter cookies. And in addition to that, it was Oreos and other things besides. He was on a lot of food for whatever reason. All right, question number three. Furby was the subject of at least one rumor, including which of these? Was it A, that their image was based on a demon from Japanese folklore? B, that male Furbies had manes and female Furbies had tails? Or C, that their internal electronics emitted harmful radiation? Harmful radiation. You know, maybe someone did say that around uh, sooner or later, but no, no, it's actually, uh, Furbies, some Furbies had manes and some had tails, and there was a rumor that that distinction was because some were male and some were female. Its creator denied that. That was just um, part of how they were made to make them different. Okay. Last question for, oh no, I'm sorry, two more questions for this round. The name Furby was chosen by its creator, why? Was it A, when his mother saw it, he said it looks like one of those furry bumblebees? Was it B, he referred to it as a fur ball and it just morphed from there? Or C, it was a last minute change from the original name of the Kirby, which had already been trademarked by someone else? A uh, furry bumblebee. That would have been great. And I'm... I'll have you know a little bit of personal information about me. I, my nickname growing up was Bumblebee, B for, for Brian. Maybe that's where that was inspired from. Uh, but no, it was actually that he just referred to it as a furball and then decided to call it a Furby. Last question for this round. Despite its popularity, the Furby had what dubious distinction? Was it A, it was actually banned by government agencies in 1999 over fears that they could record classified conversations? Was it B, that it was once common among traffickers to smuggle drugs hidden inside Furbies? Or C, was it that several cable news pundits claimed that Furby was created to promote a liberal agenda? Um, a, the government. 
Exactly right. It was actually banned from government agencies because they, people thought it could record conversations. Well, that was a really good round. At the end of round one, two out of five, you're on the board and looking good. But before we go on to round two, why don't we get a chance to know Jesse a little better? Because I recently discovered, Jesse, that you and your family have this really interesting and awesome sounding tradition called the Ghost of Christmas Present. And I would love to hear more about that. Yeah, so that's a game that we play whenever we're all together at Christmas. My mom lives um, on a street that has a lot of foot traffic, um, and her living room's actually on the second floor of the house. So we can look out the window when everyone's walking by, and we'll sing out Christmas carols at the passersby and then duck down real low. So they'll be looking around, like, wondering where the carols are coming from. So it's like a ghost, and then we just we laugh and watch when people are trying to figure out where we are, and they never can. Well, now, I'd imagine some of this foot traffic are people in the neighborhood. Has anyone figured it out by now? Um, my best friend happened to walk by because she goes to church up the street, and she called me out. She was like, Jesse, I know that's you. And ran into that. But other than her, no one quite figured it out. <laughs> well, it sounds cool. I might try that in my own neighborhood, but we don't get a lot of foot traffic where I live. But someday soon. Okay, let's move on to round two. Now, the 90s gave us a lot of Christmas movies, maybe more than their fair share of other decades. We had The Santa Claus, uh, Home Alone, Jingle All the Way, and a lot of others besides. So this round is based on that. I'm calling it Home Alone, Jingle All the Way, or both. In each, round, in each question, I'm going to give you a statement. The statement could be true of either Home Alone or Jingle All the Way, or it could be true of both movies. All you have to do is tell me which. Ready to go? Okay. All right. Yeah. Question number one. In Robert, Robert Ebert's, or Roger Ebert's review for this movie, it read in part, I liked a lot about the movie, which was genial and had a lot of energy, but I was sort of depressed by its relentlessly materialistic view of Christmas and by the choice to go with action and violence over dialogue and plot. Jingle All the Way. That was Jingle All the Way. And just for context, everyone, Jingle All the Way was the absolutely terrible movie where Arnold Schwarzenegger has to get a toy for Christmas for his kid. Uh, it's sort of based on the Tickle Me Elmo craze. Okay. Question number two. This movie had a sequel. Home Alone. Oh, Home Alone, yeah. Home Alone did have a sequel, but it wasn't the only one. Believe it or not, Jingle All the Way did have a sequel. And I'll give you a bonus point. I, apparently you didn't know it did have a sequel, but let's just try for a bonus point. Who was the star of the Jingle All the Way sequel? Uh, was it Sinbad? <laughs> no. <laughs> it was an equally terrible comedian, Larry the Cable Guy. So the um, uh, Larry the Cable Guy, the movie came out in, I think, 2014, direct-to-video, uh, came and went. No one ever heard of it, but yep, there was a sequel to Jingle All the Way. Okay. That's a shame. <laughs> Question number three. This movie uh, included a small role for Martin Mull. I don't know who that is. Let's say Home Alone. <laughs> It was actually Jingle All the Way. If, uh, if you saw the movie, there was a radio DJ, and that DJ was played by Martin Mull. Okay. Oh, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Question number four. Uh, this movie turned into a novel that was published by Scholastic Books. Home Alone. That was definitely Home Alone. You sound like you, you know that for a fact. Did you have the book? I didn't have the book, but how could you make a book out of Jingle All the Way? It was terrible. <laughs> Uh, this movie earned one of its actors a Blockbuster Entertainment Award for Best Actor in a Family Film. Um, Home Alone? Believe it or not, it was Jingle All the Way. And that was uh, awarded to Simba. So apparently Blockbuster Entertainment Awards are a thing. I didn't know that till I started researching this, uh, this game. But they are a thing, and they one was awarded to Sinbad for Jingle All the Way. Okay. At the end of round two, you got two more in that round, so we're up to a total of four points. Looking good, and many more opportunities to put more points on the board. But before we do that, let's get a chance to know Jesse a little bit better, because you are a world traveler. And presumably that means you got to experience Christmas in other parts of the world. So is there one that really stuck out for you? 
Well, Christmas in Australia was obviously very different because it's summer over there. Um, so everyone's out having barbecues, going to the beach and wearing shorts and tank tops, which was very different for me. Um, and then I've, I've also done Christmas in Scotland as well. And that, that's more traditional. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they have Christmas markets and everything. And it's really good. So two very different Christmases than what we have here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I actually recently did an episode for the podcast about Christmas in July. And a lot of people assume that in Australia, they celebrate Christmas in July because that's when winter is. Now, is that true or not? No, <laughs> there was no real Christmas in July when we were there for two years. Now, there are small celebrations, and just like there are here, and I think they're growing a little bit more in America. Uh, they are, there are these little small Christmas in July celebrations in Australia, but Christmas is celebrated on Christmas because that's when Christmas is. All right. <laughs> Let's move on to our next round. This one appears in all of the games. Am I jingling your bell? In other words, am I pulling your leg? I'm going to read you five <laughs> statements about Christmas in the 90s. The only catch is some of them are true and some of them are just things that I made up. Your job, tell me which is which. Let's go to question one. In 1992, the sitcom Family Matters aired a Christmas-themed episode titled It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Urkel. True. That is true. Did you see that episode? I'm sure I did. Sure. I loved Family Matters. <laughs> yeah, me too. I watched that for a lot of years, and I don't really remember much about it except for Urkel. <laughs> Question number two. <laughs> and nine... Steph yeah. What's that? Oh, it's just an end Stefan or Kel in the later years. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when he yeah, had the yeah. twin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Stefan was like the cool Urkel, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Question number two A 1990 made for TV Christmas movie uh, called Christmas at the Beach featured a crossover between the casts of Saved by the Bell and Beverly Hills 90210. False. You're jingling my bell. I'm jingling your bell. And thank you for saying that. Uh, it makes it a lot more fun. Totally made up. I just totally made that up. Um, although there were Christmas episodes of 90210 and Saved by the Bell, respectively. They just never melded together. Oh, Question number three. that Saved by the Bell one every year. <laughs> yeah. Question number three. In 1997, a disgruntled worker at the factory where the Tickle Me Elmo doll was made got his revenge by placing G.I. Joe voice boxes in the dolls. True. No, that's actually false. I think there may have been stories of someone doing that uh, at one point. Maybe it was with G.I. Joes and Barbies mixing them up, but I just made that up for Tickle Me Elmo. Question <laughs> number four. In the early 1990s, the food brand Ralston introduced a variation of its Cookie Crisp cereal called Christmas Cookie Crisp. It was red and green cookie cereal with candy sprinkles. True. True. That's 100% true. There were a lot of cool uh, Christmas cereals way back in the day, Christmas Crunch and a lot of you know, Lucky Charms and things like that. But the Christmas Cookie Crisp is just, it barely qualifies as, as food. It's, it's just cookies. Uh, red and green <laughs> cookies with sprinkles that you put in milk. Okay. Question number five. Mariah Carey's song, All I Want for Christmas with You, was actually banned from Minnesota's Mall of America because of its, quote, anti-commerce message. You're jingling my bell. I am 100% jingling your bell. Although you have to think she doesn't want a lot for Christmas. She just wants you. You would think that some retailers <laughs> would say, hey, flag on the play. That doesn't quite mesh with what we're trying to do here. But no, in this case, I was just making that up. Okay, so I understand that you are a big animal lover, and you have a three-legged cat. Can you tell me about that guy? Yeah, so we adopted him after he had actually been hit by a car, which is sad, but he's doing great now. He did have to have his back leg amputated. Mm -hmm. He had a kidney removed, and he only has about half of an ear, so he's a partial cat. But <laughs> he's so happy and healthy now, and you know he can run and jump and everything, and he's so cute. So... His name is Scar, fittingly. Scar. Oh. <laughs> well, I can relate to that, and I'll share a little more personal information with you. I have a 13-year-old Labrador retriever named Chloe who recently had to have one of her front toes amputated. 
Uh, so she's recovering from that as we speak. She has a cone on her head, and I am delighted that we're not hearing that uh, off in the distance because she's walking around with the cone bumping into absolutely <laughs> everything. And I was concerned as we were recording this message that I was going to hear a bunch of that, but we're not. So Merry Christmas to uh, Scar and Chloe. They'll be fully recovered by then. Okay, let's move into our <laughs> final round. It's fill in the blank, and I am calling this round Boyland Boyland because all of the questions have to do with either boy bands or teen heartthrobs from the 1990s. <laughs> Fill in the blank like starting <laughs> now. Question number one. This co-star of Home Improvement starred in the 1998 movie I'll Be Home for Christmas. Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Yes, it was Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Question number two. This sibling boy band released their album Snowed In in 1997. Hanson? It was Hanson. Good job. Question number three, for their 1998 single, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, this quintet released a music video featuring an appearance by Gary Coleman. And think. All right. We've definitely found the category for you in this round. <laughs> Way to end strong. Question number four, this quartet released the 1999 album, This Christmas, which included the single, This Gift. 98 degrees. All right. Can we make it a clean sweep? <laughs> He's the voice of Sid in Toy Story and also the star of this 1996 made-for-TV movie called Christmas Every Day, in which he must relive the same Christmas over and over. I know this is not it's on the tip of my tongue. I can't remember. All right. Let's see if I can give you a hint. His first name begins with the letter E. Um, Elijah Wood. <laughs> oh, that would have been... Was he in a Christmas movie? That would have been cool. No, this... I'm looking for Eric Von Detten. Ah, it was there. <laughs> All right. So let's tally up the points here. We have four, seven, nine, eleven points for your final score. <laughs> that is a really strong showing and one of the higher scores we've gotten in this game so far. Before I let you go, I'd love to know how you're spending Christmas this year now that you're back in the U.S. Um, my sister just had a baby. It's my very first niece. And so I will get to meet her this year at Christmas, which I'm very excited about. So just spending it with family and meeting my new niece. Well, that sounds lovely. Now, listen, everybody. I'd like to thank you for watching the game. I hope you had fun watching, but I'll bet you'd have even more fun if you played along yourself. So all you have to do is leave a comment below or write me a Christmas past podcast at gmail.com. And someday soon, maybe I can put your Christmas spirit to the test. Thanks again to Jesse for being a great player. I hope you had fun playing. And I hope that you have a very Merry Christmas this year. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.